This pile of books is just like as unstable as my life right now, but okay. I just so badly want to be a Sally Rooney girl, but I don't think I'm gonna be. <laughs> and I find her work very problematic. Hi friends. <laughs> Welcome to another video. Today, we will be talking about the end of the year book tag, AKA, what are my reading plans for the end of 2020? And how am I preparing for 2023? Every single year, it's so strange to me that we're like moving so quickly through life. My God. <laughs> As you can see, I have quite a stack of books that I'll be talking about today. And let's just get right into the first question. This tag, by the way, was created by Ariel Bissett. A link to the like original video will be in the description box down below. Question number one is any books that you started this year that you need to finish? And especially one of these. I have I have two. I have three actually, by the way. One of them is really, really shameful because I actually started reading that book in October 2021. So over a year ago. Okay, so the book that I'm like actively currently reading is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And the thing is my thought process and opinions of the Inheritance Games trilogy until so far is all over the place. I read book one, you can watch me during that reading experience in my fall reading vlog, which I think is a really cozy vlog that you should definitely check out. Obsessed, loved it so much. And then I immediately picked up the Hawthorne Legacy, read that in my latest reading challenge and did not like that at all. <laughs> I think I gave this one like a solid four out of five stars and the Hawthorne Legacy a two and a half. 2.75. This book felt super clever. I was really interested in learning more about the characters and the family and the mystery. And then the Hawthorne Legacy, it all felt a bit cheap and rushed and very much focused on the love triangle. And that continues on in the final gambit. So I'm almost halfway through. I will be finishing the original trilogy. I think there's like a fourth book coming out like called the Hawthorne Brothers. I just saw that on Goodreads. So this is the one I'm actively currently reading. And then my like book that I'm ashamed for that I'm still currently reading is Come As you are by Emily Nagowski. This is a nonfiction about sex and how to improve your sex life. And what does it all talk about? Emotional context, arousal, cultural context. It talks about desire, about your body. And I think I want to become a sex therapist. So I am really just like stoked to learn more about it. But the thing is at the beginning of this book is all information that I already knew. So I just need to power through it. And then I'll probably read some really interesting new information. If I were to finish this book by the end of 2022, that would be an accomplishment because it has been on my currently reading pile for over a year right now. And a couple of weeks ago, I also started reading The Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. Holly Bourne is one of my favorite um, contemporary novelists. Wow words, writers. <laughs> she writes very raw contemporary stories about young adults who need to figure out life. And I think that she does that in a very realistic way, which I love. I love realistic YA or adult fiction that talks about stuff like mental health and just the struggles that you go through in life. And this is about a girl who's going through a breakup. And even though she realizes that the relationship she had wasn't great, she still is going through a lot of emotional things. And in order to kind of get over over the breakup, she's going to all the places that she has been like with this person and that she has cried. And I feel like that is a different contemporary from what you usually see. Often it goes about finding love and not so much about breakups and dealing with that. So I read until page 50 of this book. And at the time I just, I just wasn't feeling it. Like I liked it, didn't get really far into it. So maybe if I read more, I will feel more of a connection to the characters and to the story. Not guaranteeing I will finish this one by the end of the year but we shall see. Question number two is, do you have a book with which you can transition into the ambiance, the vibe of the end of the year? And for this, I have to say yes. <laughs> and that is Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. Again, one of my favorite contemporary authors. And this is a book centered around a family coming together for Christmas. And again, having to deal with lots of emotional issues. Why do I I like reading about that. I just feel all the feels as well. So I just need to not feel alone. Again, Juno Dawson is one of my favorite contemporary authors. My favorites by her are definitely Meat Market and Clean. Meat Market talks about the fashion industry and body image and Clean talks about a person who's going into rehab and how the whole staying at the rehab facility is and seeing all these teenagers with addiction. Very emotional, very morally gray characters who you sometimes just wanna take by the shoulders and shake and ask them like, what the fuck are you doing? but that's why I love it so much. So I've heard great things about this, but I don't know what it's about. <laughs> the McAllister House on 
Orbitrium Road? Damn, that's a difficult word. Arboretum. Arboretum Road? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so difficult. Has seen 120 Christmases since it completion. This year, Fern is bringing her gorgeous boyfriend home and she wants everything to be perfect. But her twin brother, Rowan, would rather go on to the pole than pull crackers with the family. And their youngest sister, Willow, is terrified of Christmas Day. With only four sleeps till Christmas, three secretive siblings, two hot house guests, and one juicy secret. This Christmas, there will be some big surprises under the tree. So as you might imagine, I think I'm gonna pick this one up somewhere like around the beginning of December to get into that Christmassy mood. And it'll probably deal with how Christmas can be a time for the family to come together, but how that can probably be really, really like difficult and not all families are perfect. And I'm expecting to love this one. And I just wanna read more Juno Dawson. Still haven't read Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which is her first, I believe, adult fantasy. But this one is gonna be read. Is there a new release you're still waiting for? And I'm always really bad with keeping up to date with what's coming out, but I looked it up and I think the one book that I would really like to pick up soon is Gleanings by Neil Shusterman. This is like a spin-off or short stories of the Scythe trilogy, which I still haven't finished, but it's gonna be the answer to one of my questions later on in the video. So I have no clue what this book is about. I just know that I probably want to read it. Question number four is three books that you want to read by the end of the year. And since I'm a mood reader, it's very difficult to give an answer to this question, but I absolutely have one on this list. And that is Babel or Babel, uh, however you want to say it, by R.F. Kuang. I'm currently having still like one and a half weeks off of school. And this is a chunky boy. It's like over 500 pages. And I believe that this fantasy takes a little bit of time and effort to get into so perhaps now would be the perfect time to give it a go read some pages and get into the story this is rf kuang's most recent release and i also feel like the most hyped release of this year i've heard overall really great things about it but also some people who just weren't as excited and i'm just really scared that i'm gonna fall into the second category of people and i just i just hope that i won't be that person. I'm so bad at describing what this book is about, so I'm gonna read the back for you. Oxford, 1836. The city of dreaming spires. It is the center of all knowledge and progress in the world, and at its heart is Babel, Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, the tower from which all the power of the empire flows. Orvent in Canton and brought to England by a mysterious guardian, Robin Swift thought Babel a paradise until it became a prison. But can a student stand against an empire? Empire. Especially themes of like racism and institutional power are going to be discussed in this book. I believe it has a very interesting magic system. So lots of intrigue for this book overall. The second book that I would like to read by the end of the year is The Toll by Neil Schusterman, which is book three in the site trilogy. In preparation for the Young Adult Literature Convention, which happened in July of this year, I read Scythe and absolutely devoured this dystopian sci-fi series. I always find it so difficult to categorize books. I feel like it's more of a dystopian in which people don't die and only sites decide who do because the population still needs to be controlled. And we follow two main characters who are apprenticing to be a scythe, but only one of them will actually become one. And the one who does will have to glean, AKA kill the other. And it's like a whole corrupt world with lots of power dynamics. And I really, really liked Thunderhead, which is the sequel. And it ended on quite a cliffhanger. So I'm very curious to read the toll and see how some of the elements that were being discussed in book one and two will be worked out in book three. So yeah, that's my second book. And then book number three, uh, maybe, but they're all so chunky. I was gonna say Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro, but these three books that I've been talking about, Babel, The Tall, this one, are all over 500, almost 600 pages, and I'm a slow reader, so I'm doubting that I will pick up all three. But this seemed like a really interesting dark fantasy set in Scotland with children with magical powers and a secret institute and like an evil force who's coming for them. But realistically seen, I probably won't be picking up this one. <laughs> so maybe I'll just read a really interesting thriller instead. I just made like a mystery thriller recommendations or like my TBR video, so perhaps I, We'll pick up one of those because they're a little bit shorter 
and quicker to get through than a 600 page book. <laughs> this pile of books is just like as unstable as my life right now, but okay. Question number five is, is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite book of the year? Realistically seen, I don't think so, but I hope of course that it's gonna be Babel because I love the Poppy War by R.F. Kong. So I have hopes. And then the last question is, have you already started making reading plans for 2023? I told you I'm a mood reader, so I tried not to make plans, but I do have reading vlogs that I would like to record for separate books, like dedicated reading vlogs. And I will show you the three books that I want to make vlogs for just because I wanna know, are you excited to see these? So first of all, <laughs> I have Verity by Colleen Hoover. And if you've seen my reading TikTok's most popular romance novels video, you saw that I gave Colleen Hoover another go because she's just so popular again on TikTok. And I work at a bookstore and we mostly sell Colleen Hoover to especially young girls. And I find her work very problematic or just the way that the relationships are written. I just, I just don't agree with it. But I did already own Verity and this is not necessarily a romance novel. I think it's mostly a thriller actually. So I wanna make a video called Giving Colleen Hoover One Last Shot and then reading Verity, giving you my thoughts and like, I'll probably give up on reading Colleen Hoover afterwards, but I might be surprised. Who knows? Perhaps I'm gonna soon make a reading vlog for Normal People by Sally Rooney because so many people love this. And on the one hand, I think I'm gonna absolutely despise it. <laughs> I also mentioned this book in a one star predictions video because I feel like nothing much happens in this book and the way that it is written, like I believe when characters say something, there aren't like quotation marks around it. So it might also be a bit of a struggle to get through. But I think that if I will listen to the audiobook, that will solve most of the problems. I just so badly, want to be a Sally Rooney girl, but I don't think I'm gonna be. <laughs> and then the last dedicated reading vlog that I want to make in 2023 is A Court of Wings and Ruin. <laughs> I reread A Court of Mist and Fury this year in preparation to finally freaking finish reading this trilogy. I loved A Court of Mist and Fury five, six years ago when I read it for the first time. And my reread, um, was very mixed. I totally see why people give it a five star rating on Goodreads, but I also absolutely see why people give it a one star. So I'm very like in between. I sometimes really liked it. Sometimes I really despised it. And this one has been on my shelves for over five years too, but it's just like a 700 page book, which will probably be filled with lots of cringe worthy face sex. <laughs> Which like, if you enjoy that, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I didn't particularly love it in a Court of Mist and Fury. I think you guys would be interested in seeing my opinion on this book as well, right? I don't know, let me know. <laughs> and that was the end of the year book tag. Comment down below which book or books you really want to read by the end of the year. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.